Hey everyone, welcome back to part 10 of Getting Psyched for Information Literacy. This week we will be talking about the Open Science Framework. If you recall from a few weeks ago, we talked about open access. And open access and the Open Science Framework have very similar ideologies. So before we dive in to the Open Science Framework website, I wanted to get a little bit familiar with what open science is and um, who is the hosting center for open science. Well, as we can see here on the FAQ page, the open science framework is um, provided by the Center of Open Science and it's a nonprofit organization and the whole intention is just to increase the openness of data and science um, and scientific research. Uh, it is free to use, so anyone that wants to use the information available on the Open Science uh, Framework, they are able to for absolutely no cost. That being said, just because the research methods and the data is available for free, uh, Open Science Framework does not account for the cost of conducting research. If you think about it, if you have any kind of participants, you have to incentivize them for their time or pay them for their time or lab equipment. And so often you have to seek out funding to conduct research. Open Science does not yet have a solution to that problem. So that minor caveat is overshadowed by all the great things that open science does provide. Uh, for example, replicability in uh, psychology or in any kind of science is a big factor. So uh, if you scroll to the bottom of the Open Science Framework homepage, you can find out that there's actually two projects, one for psychology and one for cancer biology, that really studies whether or not um, previous research studies can be replicated. So when you get here, um, you fall on a landing page where you get a little bit of the abstract of the whole project, um, as well as how to cite it, and various comments, additional research, research, but also you get to see what studies that they replicated to see if the studies were um, could be re recreated. Having data openly available like this and um, allowing other researchers to replicate studies is important because not only does it uh, deter any kind of falsification of data because you know other researchers could then essentially replicate your study, but also it can help find any p-hacking that might have occurred where there's a misuse of uh, data in order to make something statistically significant. So. If people are reconducting these experiments and these studies, then they can see if um, any kind of data has been misused. Because of the Open Science Framework, you can see here that over 100 replications have been conducted from over 98 or from 98 articles, and um, this just helps ensure that research is um, ethical and that the reports are you know, legitimate and that you can trust the research that you're finding. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, this is just the psychology one, uh, but there is one for uh, biology, cancer biology. So not only does the Open Science Framework allow us to evaluate research that's already been conducted, but we can also build upon research from other um, research groups. So what I did here was I just searched and typed in Alzheimer's to see what kind of projects about Alzheimer's disease there currently are registered. Well, there's 164 projects registered. So researchers with this topic are able to look at these other projects and see what's been conducted within um, the different the different studies. So instead of working in silos where they're isolated from other researchers in the area, they're able to actually share the data and their research so that, again, we can hopefully progress faster in our studies and find out more by using information without having to reinvent the wheel. I hope that this brief interview to the Open Science Framework has been helpful, especially in understanding how um, freely available data and not working in silos can really help progress science 
forward, and also how when we make data available, it gives the ability to evaluate previous studies and determine whether or not the findings in those studies are legitimate. So thank you, and we'll see you again next week.